Okay, good day guys, good day to you all. Welcome back to the Formula Sports channel. Thanks for being here. A gentle reminder to one, smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel. These are free and easy ways to support the channel and as always we do appreciate the support. So guys, want to talk about three stories quick and fast. For starters, I am very, very, very elated and happy for this gentleman on screen right now, Junior Flemings, the baller, signed with a big club in France, Toulouse. It has finally been confirmed. You know, I have been hearing about the, the, the rumors about him being linked to this club for, for some time now, from so way back in last year, like for, for quite a while. And then, we saw um, Simon Preston break the, the, the story that, you know, Toulouse was, was, you know, heavily pursuing the player. And then we heard, you know, that Toulouse had signed the player. But Toulouse is now just confirming it, right? Finally, finally, they have confirmed it. It's, it, it. It took them a while, but, you know, eventually they got around to confirming it. This is on their Instagram, you know. um. As I said, man, I'm very, very happy for Junior Flemings. You know, when he made that move, when his, he, you know, his time at Phoenix Rising concluded, and you know, he finished the USL season the top goal scorer in the league. Many of us would have been worried about Flemo when he made that move to Birmingham Legion because many of us are looking at the player in the USL and saying. This player is better than the USL. You know, why can't he get a move out? And then, you know, when we saw him have the best season of his career you now, only to end up back at another USL club, you know, many of us, including myself, was, was concerned. You know, it was one of the first videos I did on this channel talking about Junior Fleming's needed, needing to get the hell up out of the USL. Right, because he was better than the USL. Um, one of the things that kind of concerned me as well was the whole incident with the slur. Um, I was I was worried that that whole incident would have derailed his career because I wouldn't be surprised if that would have had a major part to play in why the player didn't make that move immediately after that big season in the USL. Right, so I was a little bit concerned that that whole slur thing would have, you know, impacted his career and impacted, you know, his ability to make a move. But thank God it didn't. And now he's playing for a big club in France. Toulouse is a big club in France, prestigious club in France. Yes, they are in League 2 at the moment, you know, the French second division. But this is a club that is well placed to get promotion to the French first division. Yo, it would be crazy, man. Junior Flemings make a move from the USL, the American second division, to League One. If Toulouse do get promotion to League One, he would have made that move in a matter of months. So oh, in a matter of a couple of months, he would have gone from playing in the USL, the American second division, to a top five league in Europe. The French League Un. Guys, that is a big deal. Think about it. How many players we have right now? How many players we have right now playing in top five leagues in Europe? How many players we have right now playing for a more prestigious club than Toulouse? Big, big, big deal, right? Flemmer needs to go to this club and Flemmer needs to immediately concern himself with getting into the starting lineup. Right, needs to squeeze into that starting lineup before the end of the season because I mean if he if he doesn't get into the starting lineup before the end of the season, it would be even harder for him to get into that starting lineup if Toulouse, you know, get promoted to the French League Un. And then there is the possibility as well that the club get promoted and look to, you know, shore up the squad so to speak, so to speak, you know, bring in players you know, that they believe can aid them in whatever objectives they, 
may have when or if they qualify or if they're in league one right you know clubs that they, they get promoted and they look to, to to bring in you know some additions to the squad to help to shore up the squad um so Fleming needs to concern himself with getting into the starting lineup as quickly as possible you know i i think Flemo is a is a very good player i think it doesn't show for the national team i think he I think a lot of it is in his head when he plays for the national team. I don't think it's a case that he's incapable of making better decisions. I just think that for whatever reason, when he plays for the national team, you know, his decision making is not the best. Probably he's in his head a little bit too much, right? And he's overthinking things, I think, you know, but and and then there's the whole thing of, you know. I don't think any of, for the most part, most of our attackers under the previous head coach, you know, did not play as well for country as they did for clubs. So I, I, I think Junior Flemings is a real top quality player and I have been crying out for Flemo to make a move to Europe for a long, long while. And it's good to see that it is a move of this particular magnitude. A lot of people didn't think Flema had a, a, a great season. This season, I respectfully disagree. Yes, it wasn't as good as, as the previous season with Phoenix. But, you know, in terms of from a stats perspective, but I watched, you know, a, a number of Flema's games this season and the games that I watched, right? He was very good. A lot of people said Nico Brett outperformed him. A lot of the games that I watched, I respectfully disagree. Yes, Brett's stats were better, but... Flemo's performances were very, very good. He almost played, not almost, he was basically playing in a free role in a number of the games, just roaming and basically allowed to do what he, he pleases. And trust me, man, he was very instrumental this season in Birmingham Legion's build-up play, right? In a, in, in a number of the games I watched, he absolutely balled, right? Performed even better than Brett in some of the games to me personally. Right, but obviously, you know, in, in terms of the runoff play, but obviously, you know, Brett has the stats. So, you know, congrats again to Junior Flemings. I am very, very happy for Junior Flemings. Up oh, next, a quick little story, right? Quick one on Kimar Lawrence. It's it's not really about Kimar Lawrence, but I still had to share this one with you guys. This is according to the Guardian. Napoli's insignia to join Toronto, right? The Napoli and Italy forward Lorenzo Insigne has agreed to a deal to join the MLS club Toronto this summer, right? I think it's in um, July. He is supposed to see 30-year-old forward will move, will move to MLS side in July. Guys, Taxi must be happy about this, right? I mean, look, I, I want to highlight it because it's always a good thing when our reggae boys are playing with top, top quality players, top class players, right? I'm sure Kimar Lawrence will enjoy, you know, providing overlapping and underlapping runs to a Lorenzo Insigne. That's if, you know, Lawrence is still at Toronto FC come July, right? But I'm sure Kimar Lawrence will enjoy playing with a, a player of this caliber. And again, it is very, very, very good, right? For me as a fan personally of our reggae boys, to see our reggae boys playing with these caliber players, sharing dressing rooms, right? And the training pitch and the field of play with caliber players, top quality, top notch players, the likes of a Lorenzo Insignia. So I'm sure Kimar Lawrence looks forward to providing those underlapping and overlapping runs to Insignia if he is still at Toronto FC when Insignia arrives. The next story I want to talk about quick and fast is this player by the name of Kevin Stewart. This, honestly, for me personally, I think Kevin Stewart 
is the most frustrating reggae boy. Can we call him a reggae boy? He has not played for the reggae boys. But, you know, he has his passport and he is ready to go once he's fit. The problem is, man, this virgin can't stay fit to save him damn life, man. Kevin Stewart cannot keep fit to save his life, right? I call him the most frustrating reggae boy I can think of in a while because I honestly think if Kevin Stewart was a part of this World Cup qualifying campaign, would be in a better position than we are right now. Such is the quality of the player. Um, I had a bit of issues with him with some games I watched with him, with him last season at Blackpool. Um, while I saw the player's strengths and, you know, his strengths were pretty obvious, I was a little bit, I thought his passing and his tackling was a little bit inconsistent. Those were the only two issues I had with him. But this season, yes, he has only played, what, three times, two starts, I believe. But in those two starts and also in the Manchester City preseason friendly, I was very impressed. I think the player, you know, has worked on his passing and has worked on his tackling, especially his passing. So, you know, even when we saw him in the, in the two games this season, yes, it's a small window, but still. And also the Manchester City um, preseason game that he, that he played in with his team, Blackpool. Right, that one where he left early because of the injury. But, you know, in those respective games, the player, I saw improvements in the player's game. I personally think the player did some work in the preseason, right? And became an even better quality player. Guys, when you talk about a press resistant CDM in a man, you ever hear Jeremy Miller talk about a press resistant CDM? Kevin Stewart is your guy. When I tell you, this guy is silky smooth on the ball, right? He's a very good CDM. The only two issues I, I had with him was I thought the, the passing and the tackling was a little bit inconsistent. But in the few times we have seen him this season, he has worked on those things and looks a, a mightily impressive CDM, right? Especially in that Manchester City preseason. That Manchester City preseason friendly, guys. Manchester City took that preseason friendly very seriously. It was evident by one day the team that Guardiola fielded and also the intensity of play, right? And I think up until the point that Stewart got injured, he played very well. And if you can do that, right, against a, a, a City team that is, that is a serious City team, Right, if you can do that, yes, it was a preseason friendly, but as I said, City look to have taken the game very seriously as a as a warm up for their season, and Kevin Stewart played very well. But it, it it's such a damn shame, man, that this player just cannot keep fit to save his life. Right, a very good player, man, especially very good on the ball. Silky smooth on the ball, very good in tight spaces, right? I mean, j j trust me, man. It's it's it's. I personally long to see this particular player. I long to see this particular player, right? So hopefully, I mean, I don't know when we'll see him, but you know, I don't know. You know, if we see him in the World Cup qualifiers, it might be too late. But hey, guys, smash the like button. Subscribe as well. Take care. Stay safe.